I would like to acknowledge that this video was produced on the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nations, who have been custodians of this land for thousands of years. I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging, and extend that respect to all Aboriginal people today. First Nations peoples should be aware that this video contains images, voices and names of people who have died. This video contains images that some viewers may find confronting. In late 2019, in the remote Northern Territory community of Yundamu, Police Constable Zachary Rolfe fired three shots into 19-year-old Indigenous man Kermanjai Walker, killing him within a matter of hours. Two of these shots occurred while Kermanjai Walker was held down on the ground by another police officer. Within a matter of days, the police officer responsible for the shooting, Constable Zachary Rolfe, was arrested and charged for murder. Alternative charges were also laid, including manslaughter and engaging in a violent act causing death. After a near five-week trial in the Supreme Court of the Northern Territory, where it appeared as though the defense would issue challenges over the potential jurors when a person of color was called, leading the jury at the trial to be almost all white. This predominantly white jury found in favor of the defendant. A jury found Zachary Rolfe innocent of all charges. No police has, has ever been held criminally liable. A white system of justice has failed them. This verdict that acquitted Rolf was delivered in under seven hours. Really happy with the result, really happy with my family and my friends, for the police force and especially my mum. The case has central importance in analysing the way in which the media operates in relation to matters of criminal justice. It's taken an ugly turn, this protest. Yes, it has, Jane. Protesters have started smearing paint all over the columns and walls here. The news media is responsible for mediating to the general public about the objective reality of incidents of crime. Despite the claims of many reporters and commentators, it is not possible to be entirely objective. This is not inferring that those reports are always factually inaccurate, but in order to have any meaning, knowledge and theory must always exist for someone and for some purpose. The production of an ideologically neutral text is impossible. Socioeconomic class continues to determine who has control of and who has access to the traditional broadcast media. Those with the privileged access to the mainstream media are still bound by structural rules surrounding the treatment of authoritative or official sources like the state and its representatives, and so often lacks biting criticism and slants towards a conservative approach. Other reporters are unashamedly partisan, polemic, and propagandistic. When his mother is ruined by drink and petrol sniffing, the 24-hour news cycle deems newsworthiness that which is novel and timely, often leading to a reduction in deeper investigative journalism. Audiences are not passive and uncritical, as according to the 1940s hypodermic needle theory, but tend to engage with the so-called reptilian hot buttons of emotional topics and controversy, and so the bias of partisan approaches works in one's favour in the war of propaganda. An individual's perception of reality is highly influenced by the consumption of media, which can shape the definitions we have of ourselves and our world. Personal concerns can be reified into beliefs about the public world by favourable coverage. Producing masses of intertextual information can lead to the acceptance of this propaganda to the level that producers believe it themselves. The domino effect theorises that broadcast messages can lead to a gain in knowledge which affects attitudes and their on the behaviours of people. What this means is that the media has a role to play when it comes to concerns about prejudicial attitudes and corresponding discrimination. The media's depiction of crime may be founded in prejudice, but may also contribute to it. A police officer is a public servant who is expected to serve and protect. The onus was on him to act professionally. Meanwhile, a teenage boy, particularly an Indigenous teenage boy with a troubled upbringing, carries with it the negative stereotype that without external structures to support him, he is likely to fall in with the wrong group and be impulsive to acts of crime, whether that be violent or otherwise. For many people, it becomes impossible to distinguish between what is an image and what is reality, what is represented and what is the real. With the information I had on that night, I wouldn't have done anything um, differently. I did my job, I did what I was trying to do. And... In circumstances where we have a trial by media, the implicit biases that people may have and the connotations that they may be expected to carry with certain words are unlikely to be dispelled by the media in the same way that the Jury Directions Act may, for instance. Almost every media report has called Kumanjai Walker's death a tragedy. Sometimes the outcomes are tragic. Yet they continue to place a great deal of blame on the victim by bringing in evidence of his character. Again, something treated in a very strict way by the Uniform Evidence Act. 
and a matter usually directed towards the accused, not the victim. In doing so, they may unintentionally imply that a member of the state shooting multiple times to kill a teenager should perhaps be treated as justifiable and maybe even an appropriate form of extrajudicial killings by the organized state actors against its civilian population. Publishing quotes without explaining how they're situated in context means that those concepts and ideas are being expressed as if they were the publisher's own, while they avoid the scrutiny of being held to account for those statements. Sick of protesters using Aboriginal people and our circumstances for their own political means. The selection of information and sources necessarily means the negation of others. Deliberately ignoring pertinent information or sources is a form of manipulative silencing. Walker's childhood is almost always brought up, but Rolf's military service is conversely ignored. This detail is important in exploring the causes of the matters at hand, particularly following allegations of recent war crimes committed by members of the Australian Defence Force, including the unauthorised killing of non-combatants. More generally, this absence of relevant information means that a great deal of context is lost that would otherwise situate the matters at hand. In the Northern Territory, where these events took place, 30% of the population is Indigenous, yet they represent 84% of the prison population. This is in context, following several inquiries of Indigenous deaths in custody. Many of these occurred because the Indigenous were not given access to adequate medical facilities, as was the case here where Walker died because he did not have access to a hospital for a number of hours after being shot. Issues of over-policing and Indigenous deaths in custody in general are treated as if they were complex issues that are intractable and difficult to resolve. I don't want to be quiet! I don't want to be humble! I don't want to sit down! Yet, various indigenous people have offered solutions that make sense in and of themselves. No guns! Number one being... No guns! To have guns taken out... In their own remote community. We don't want no guns! Enough! It's enough! If people in positions of authority can't not kill a vulnerable person, then maybe we need to relook at these institutions. That's a really basic, simple request. Do not kill us.